China's Premier Li Keqiang is among the world leaders in New York for the UN General Assembly. But right now he's speaking to the Economic Club of New York. Let's listen in. Now, Li is actually scheduled to speak to the UN General Assembly again on Wednesday, but he's already making good use of his time in the city. CCTV's Nathan King is live for us in New York. Nathan? Yeah, absolutely. That speech is uh, wrapping up right now. Uh, quite a wide-ranging uh, speech indeed in front of the Economic Club of New York. And if you don't know what that is, it is probably one of the most influential institutions here in the city when it comes to Wall Street finances and also economic policy makers uh, in the U.S. So it's probably the highest profile Chinese official speaking to a New York economic audience this year. A, a very wide-ranging speech. And uh, in interestingly, he was introduced... Uh, by Henry Kissinger, the former uh, U.S. Secretary of State, uh, who was just a young national security advisor 45 years ago when he made a clandestine secret trip to China, even having to go from Pakistan and pretend he was ill to be greeted uh, uh, by Zhou Enlai, the number three there uh, at the time uh, in Beijing, where they, m they paved the way for President Nixon's visit to China, the week that changed the world. And 45 years later, Li Keqiang making the point that the global amount of global trade now uh, run by the US and China is beyond the wildest dreams of those days. In that time, China-US trade was almost zero, or even less than what was traded between the United States and a small country in Central America. Well, at that time, he might be predicting that 40 years later, 45 years later, China-US trade will take up one-fifth of the world's total trade. And combined, our two economies will take up one-third of the world's total 45 years ago, 45 years later. Uh, interestingly, he went on to say that the U.S. and China uh, trade now really can help push the world, even though trade has diminished. And he was talking about China's slowing growth, uh, basically saying that China has sustained growth despite a slowdown in world trade between 6 and 7 percent the last few years. And why do they need to maintain that growth? Because China is still a developing country. He reassured the U.S. audience that even though China's economy may soon be the same size of the U.S. When it comes to per capita income, it will take till 2050 to do that. China needs to bring a lot more people in from poverty. 14 million new jobs need to be created. And those jobs, he told the New York Economic Club, are, of course, customers for global businesses, including uh, the U.S. So it's very much a reassuring uh, and explaining speech uh, to influential New York economic policymakers and Wall Street as well. And that's just not the only economic engagement that Li Keqiang has had. Earlier, he also uh, met with Hank Paulson, the former Treasury Secretary, who was Treasury Secretary at the time of the global economic crisis, uh, uh, which is worth bearing in mind, and also former Goldman Sachs head and former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, the billionaire as well. And he had this interesting take on uh, uh, the interdependence on U.S.-China trade. Let's have a listen. China and the United States don't just have stable political ties, but also enjoy very close business cooperation. I was told that every second of every day, a Chinese is buying an iPhone product. And maybe when that Chinese customer is buying this iPhone, he's not aware that the real big Apple is New York City. A uh, bit of a joke there about uh, Big Apple, and it's not—it's not unfair to say that also Li Keqiang and Chinese leaders would see a lot, like a lot more Americans, to buy Chinese products. If they're buying iPhones, why can't Americans buy products from Huawei and other tech uh, giants growing tech? innovation in China as well. That's going to be discussed. The Bilateral Investment Treaty, of course, which has taken some time uh, to negotiate as well. And interestingly, also, Li Keqiang will be speaking here at the UN General Assembly here behind me in front of world leaders. And of course, it comes on uh, hot on the heels in the next 24 hours from the successful Hangzhou G20 summit. And the theme there was a sustainable development model for the global economy. So world leaders will be looking out for that. Final note, 
45 years ago, of course, from that Kissinger trip that uh, uh, we were talking about at the top, and 45 years since China, actually, the People's Republic, took its seat here uh, uh, once the U.S. and China made up uh, here in the U.N. General Assembly and on the U.N. Security Council. So it's a historic year indeed, Rochelle. Indeed. Thank you so much, Nathan King. There, live for us from the U.N. in New York.